really exciting video for you today because we're going to build my dream gun. Oh, we're going to build my dream gun and we're gonna start by putting it together and we're gonna finish with some shots out at the range. Uh, it's gonna look like this when it's done, but we're not there yet. This is the Timber Creek Outdoors Enforcer chassis. I had to call in some favors from some people to make sure I was getting the right components to match. I also did not know the length of this until I actually got it here. And until I know the length of this chassis handguard where it's gonna fall, it was difficult for me to tell Mostec how long of a barrel we needed. I think the Timber Creek is beautiful. This color is burnt bronze and I decided to do a little bit of titanium and burnt bronze together just to give it a little bit of a different look. Now the action from Faxon has been a long time coming and they did send this out to me. Uh, thank you Faxon, I'm gonna do you proud on this. I feel like I got a really good one. We're gonna go test fire and get this thing shooting. But I feel like it's got a nice smooth action. I, I love the flame fluting. That's their, that's their brand style of fluting on there with the flame. I'm a big fan of it. I think it looks great. So far the action feels really good, but we haven't shot it yet. Two more people to thank here, Moss Tech Barrels. We have a one in five twist. This is my only one in five twist for the 8.6 Blackout. One in five twist, and it is 11-ish in inches long. Moss Tech guys uh, got me on the phone. We put this in the chassis. They told me how to measure and what numbers they needed to make this barrel fit with our chassis. So I sent out my action. They spun us up a barrel. They also made us a 338 Spectre barrel at the same time. Our friends at Elf, Elfman Tactical, they make a really great trigger. It's pretty much the only trigger I'm running in AR-15s. I uh, noticed that they have a RIM 700 trigger, so we have to give that a try. Uh, so far, we need to turn up. We need to turn it up a little bit. Uh, it is a little too light for my liking. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of turn into this. So, but a nice, crisp, clean break. I like the Elf trigger. Hey, today's sponsor is 1791 EDC, maker of this really cool pocket organizer. They have all sorts of holsters for multi-tools, pocket knives, flashlights, anything that you need to put in your pocket. They've also got room for cash and cards. This is the Pocket Duo. I've got my Cloud Defense flashlight in there and a Kershaw Reverb pocket knife there on the front. Here on the back, you've got room to stuff some cards and some cash inside there. We've got a uh, gift card from Academy in ours. Thank you 1791 for sponsoring this video. Go check them out. Make sure you use the channel name as a discount code. Okay, let's talk groups. This was Howworks. This is the ELDM 285 subsonic. Okay, we have a 0.77 and a 1.6 from the Howworks ELDM 285. Okay, over with the 300, this is the Rex Solid from Howlworks. Had quite a bit of this stuff. I shot several groups. I only have one page here to show you, but we have a 1.36, a 1.21, and a 1.12. I think it came out absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted, and the good news is it shoots really well. Uh, we've got some titanium, although our titanium colors are a little bit different. Hmm, we may have to go with a black grip on that. It definitely was a dream come true to finally have an 8.6 blackout that is a bolt action. This is our first bolt action build. Uh, it came together great. Uh, building bolt actions are actually pretty simple. I was definitely overthinking it quite a bit. Uh, I put this project off and the project was also delayed due to components, but I am unbelievably happy with it right now. There are a couple of folks out there that have talked about the FX7 from Faxon, the action. 
I do have limited experience with bolt action, but it leaves absolutely nothing to be desired for me. I am incredibly happy with it. It is so smooth and it runs so well. I had no feeding issues. We fed everything that we ran through there. We had some solids, we had some, some makers, um, all sorts of stuff, and it, and it shot all of them and fed all of them really well. The Mostec barrel being a one in five twist, uh, the rumors out there are that a one in five twist is a little bit more accurate, but obviously less spinny than the one in three twist. Um, I did find it to be incredibly accurate. The dead air primal is maybe even better on a bolt gun than a semi-auto. Uh, very quiet. I always kind of thought, given that this is a 45, 46 caliber, I always kind of thought that it wasn't as quiet as it could be. Now we do have a pork chop that is coming from, uh, but it's still several weeks away. We can compare the two and see what we think, but very happy with the sound with the bolt gun. You can see right there, the trigger, it's got that shoe on there that is adjustable. Plenty of real estate there for your finger. And we did turn it up a little bit because it was too light. It is still very light, but it is unbelievably satisfying. This is the Elfman tactical trigger for the Rim 700. You've heard me say it a hundred times. I'm 100% a fan of the Elf triggers. They're doing some really cool things and I'm really happy with this trigger. The main known quantity on this build was the LPVO from Tract. Absolutely crystal clear. Love this optic. I need three more of them right away. This is the one to eight. I don't think they have a one to 10. I think they only have a one to eight. Uh, it's a great optic. It's a little bit expensive, but if you're tired of messing with cheaper optics, jump to something like this. You'll be amazed at what the difference actually is. Now that I have two bolt actions, the Q-Fix and the Faxon with a Mostec barrel and Elf trigger, I don't know if I'm going to shoot A6 Blackout semi-auto anymore. That SLR is such a nice, beautiful gun. Um, I'll maybe shoot that one, but I don't think that I really need to build any more uh, semi-autos. Uh, at my last count, I had nine semi-autos, a combination of uppers and lowers and I now have two bolt guns. And then we also built a gun for my brother-in-law that is no longer with us. And between all of those, I think that makes a total of 11 guns that we built in this caliber. I'm probably gonna take a break on that for a little while, but that doesn't mean that's gonna change anything with the 8.6 blackout content. It just means we're gonna to continue to test what we already have. We are also going to be reloading. My reloading bench right now is not even set up. I'll get you over there, we'll get it set up, and probably in a couple of months, there'll be quite a bit of reloading content. I haven't had to reload because we've been testing so much ammo from several manufacturers. Um, we've also shot almost every brand on the market, and we found some good stuff and some bad stuff. Um, I have an ammo list for you. Uh, it'll be pinned down below. It's the best spots to find 8.6 Blackout ammo if you're not a reloader.